you should go through life like a stone through water. It just flows around you and you just, you know, you don't, you don't let it that. That's a great philosophy. I don't know what that is. That's like the friction of life or, you know, letting, letting things affect you in a negative way or getting hung up on occurrences that ultimately have no meaning. So Lao Tzu was saying, don't, don't be so hung up, man. Don't have your hang-ups. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> Every self-help book is basically a rehash of the Tao Te Ching. Yeah, pretty much, yes. Let's see, he killed himself in the end. Oh my god. Yeah. Maybe it was like, yeah, I've served my purpose here and I'm old. I'm at the bottom of the river. Oh, rocks. Now I'm annoyed. <laughs> he didn't have a gun to shoot himself with. It was China. They had gunpowder. <laughs> he could have had a tube. <laughs> Welcome to the basement for unboxing. We're going to open up our mailbag. Look at all that stuff we got. <gasps> Craig is literally drowning in gifts. And of course, we're going to thank our generous donors. People who go to welcometothebasementshow.com and donate to our show. Donors such as... Maura, Patricia, Karen, Brian, Michael, Isaac, Brian, Stephanie, Kevin, Anthony, Jennifer, George, Dan, Sierra, Maurizio, and Paul, who says... Greetings from Berlin. Danke Shane, Paul. Hope you win a golden bear next year. Well, let's kick it off with some postcards. We got two of them here. First of all, this is from Andrew to commemorate our Roar episode. Oh, a couple little, little lions, lions there. there. Little... And we got one here from the Lori Metzel family. We've heard from them. The Pennsylvania State Capitol Building, right yes, there. Yes, it is. I oh, know well. you like political buildings. I do. I like them better than politics. And now the Zatoichi Report. My quest to watch all 25 Zatoichi sequels in 2016 continues. This week I've managed to watch the 13th in the series, Zatoichi's Vengeance. Not to be confused with number 10, Zatoichi's Revenge. All of these movies follow a formula. That's clear. But they are all of a universal high quality. And this one is no exception. The weird thing that happens in this movie is the actor who played the samurai from the very first movie, the guy who has TB, Yeah, he comes back and plays a totally different character. Oh, these things happen in real life? Yeah, but the really weird part is that he looks exactly the same. He has the same costume, the same hairdo. He's playing another samurai, facing off against Zatoichi, and Ichi kills him again. That's not a spoiler. Ichi always kills him. <laughs> so you've made it to number 13, you said? Yep, I'm just about to go over the hump. Just humping along. If you like. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's in this? He and Kurosawa are in a cab. And he's like, yeah. you see that window up there? Look at that window. That's my wife. Don't don't write on that. You know who she's up there with? I won't go any further. My mother has very archaic notions about sunshine and the rain. I know that sunshine and the rain means that the devil is beating his wife. <laughs> Just ask Towns Van Zant. <laughs> Except for the internet. That's pretty great. Yep. Nothing makes you unhappy there. Let's open some packages. All right, here we go. Got one right here from overseas. A postcard. Ooh, that's a really cool looking one. From Matt from England. I think we've heard from him before. The St. Nicholas Church and Holy Bones in Leicester. That's something else here. Ooh, this looks like a sweet treat. Rhubarb and custard candies. Look at those. Or not chewy. Tasty stuff. Thanks, Matt. From Trisha in Norfolk, Virginia. Of a book, Midnight Me and Bob Macab. Oh, Trisha wrote that book. She's Her name's on the cover. Oh, wait, right here. Trisha did the drawings for this. Nice. Yes. And now, some viewer questions. Kermock writes, Really? Hate on BNL? They're better than Eddie Money. Recently, we made a joke at the Bare Naked Ladies' expense during our Conqueror episode, comparing their music to something called the Slow Death. And Kermock, I can tell you're a fan because you refer to them as BNL. And <laughs> you're right, they are better than Eddie Money, because unlike Mr. Money, they do seem to attempt to make unique music. Unfortunately for me, that uniqueness is a bit grating and cloying. If I had a million dollars. <laughs> I might buy myself a Bare Naked Lady CD, but only one. <laughs> John Chambers writes, What were your formative films? The ones you could watch again and again as a kid, and do you still watch them now? The right stuff. 
So yeah, it's a story about the early days of the space race, and it is, uh, I, I just found it to be endlessly fascinating and funny when I was a kid, and exciting. And Will Gibson writes, How is it that I loathe Kevin Costner as much as I do, and Demi Moore is the worst, and Dane Cook is a huge wang, and yet I love Mr. Brooks? Riddle me that, film nerds. Well, Will, I don't have an answer for you because I've not seen Mr. Brooks, but your question was so entertaining that I felt I needed to read it aloud on this show. Tonight's poem is not about movies, but it is about the recently departed, dearly beloved Prince. Sorry it's taken us so long to address this. The realities of our shooting schedule make addressing current events very difficult, but his passing was a great shock, very sad for me, for whom he basically was a childhood hero. That record right behind you, that's the first record I ever bought with my own money, and really? I bought it on vinyl. It was just a really transformative album. And your mother heard it, and she wrote Tipper Gore and said, Do something about this filth! No, my mom was not like that. Yeah, that's good. So I have a tribute to Prince here, like the David Bowie poem. It's a bunch of his lyrics, kind of mixed around, and so I did not write the words to this. I only wrote the title, Purple Sun. You walked in, I woke up. It was just like a dream, and you were so strange, because you had a pocket full of horses. The voice of many colors sings a song that's so bold. What's this strange relationship? The rain sounds so cool when it hits the barn roof, and the horses wonder who you are. Thunder drowns out what the lightning sees. You feel like a movie star. A world of never-ending happiness. Life, it ain't real funky unless it's got that pop. You must be a limousine. I dream of you for all time, for all time, the dream we all dream of. I just want your extra time, time, times. The beautiful ones, they hurt you every time. How can I stand to stay where I am? Why can't I fly away in a special sky? Somebody, please, please tell me what the hell is wrong. Once upon a time in a haystack of despair, black day, stormy night, don't cry. Give what you can, all you can stand, and all of your life will be made. No one in the whole universe will ever compare. You sexy motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I just couldn't bring myself to beep out that one, so my apologies. And really, after the Slapshot episode, <laughs> you should be inured to it. Bon voyage, Prince. We will miss you. The rest of our donors for this month are as follows. Kelsey, Alexander, Tristan, Jacqueline, Isabel, Patrick, Aaron, Graham, Cody, Rachel, Lindsay, Abraham, David, Elizabeth, Michael, who has said that he started a movie night with his brother, inspired by our show. He sent us his list of movies, and he wants our recommendations for what to watch next. Michael, you've got quite a list there. Any one of those movies you could pick, and it would be a good time. But nevertheless, we do have some recommendations. From Tona, she recommends Hitchcock's Rope. I recommend Jim Jarmusch's Dead Man. And for me, how could I not recommend Hausu? Watch it. <laughs> have a crazy night. Hausu. And lastly, Rebecca says, I know Craig is a quarter Italian, but is he also part Indian? My best friend and I have your been... Your best friend? My best friend and I have been debating this since we started your show. Both of you are A-plus beautiful. Wow, that's so sweet. Thank you. You are not part Indian. I am not part Indian. So let's open the rest of our packages and wrap this up. Okay, let's see. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Gotten something from Colby Nelson Betts before. Oh, I bet that's chapter two of his book. Chapter two. Oh, and postcards. Yeah. Would you like to read a passage from Colby's book? All the overthinking and overanalyzing completely deprived him of any chance of sleep. Record Shelf is going to get a lot more hit as soon as I put up Slint Spiderland. Oh, one of my favorite album covers. T.A. Epley says what they used to call math rock. I think they still call it that. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get that. You don't get the phrase or you don't get the type of music? I don't get what it means. They changed the time signature. Oh, sure, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for your donations and your packages, and thank you just for viewing and being you. Yes. This coming Friday, you can see our new episode of Welcome to the Basement, and we hope to see you then. Yeah. Who knows what movie it'll be. Good night. Good night. Perhaps you would like to see the trees in bloom again. They do an elaborate dance. And he brings the orchard back to existence. 
through the power of dance and imagination. <laughs> Peach Blossoms, live at Budokan. Look at that! Magic! <laughs>